Special attacks. Uh, jolly nature. Huh? What? Hey, it's you. I didn't think you'd stick around. How long has it been? <laughs> Two months. We're on day 42, huh? What have I been up to? I've been playing Pokemon. Look, I'm in a match right now. Down to my last Pokemon. Would you look at that? My Umbreon has one attacking move. Shadow Ball. Against a normal type? What are the odds? What? How is that even allowed? This is a game for children? I can't beat this game for children? Hey, look, it's me at the start of the video. Let's uh, move past this to stay more family friendly. So for these past two months and 140 plus tries, I've gone through phases of tilt, untilt, and tilt again. The highest I've gotten to is battle number 42 on day four. Yep, you heard right. I got to battle number 42 on day four, and I did not hit that number again for two whole months. Let me show you the mental tribulations I've been going through. This is bad, but this is okay. This is bearable. What's soul crushing are the stallers. I'm talking about the cum that uses minimize six times so you can't hit him. The spike skarmory roar. The ludicolo who uses double team and leech seed so you aren't even given a quick painless death. This guy, this guy does the real soul crushing. Look at him, a toxic blissey. Oh god. I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. <laughs> Just use an Aerial Ace, because Aerial Ace can never miss. But besides the fact that flying types are generally dog water, what do you do when there's an Aggron setting up double team, huh? Let me paint a scenario for you so I can show you what happens when you're against this monstrosity. You switch to a water type Pokemon, and he sets up double team one time. Now, you better hope that you get that 80% chance of hitting, because if you don't, he's going to set up another double team, and then your chances become 60%. And if you miss that one, just FF, go next, break your desk, Lydridge Pan, and have a little chat with Shigeki Morimoto. <sighs> Do you people understand what I've been going through? Just look at my mental! Uh... <laughs> and I'm only showing you the very top of this bull, Taros Poop. We got Endure Blaziken's using Reversal, Dragon Dance Gyarados, and Explosion Regirock. <laughs> through this challenge, I felt like I was looping through time. Hey, didn't we kick you out like 5 minutes ago? But alas, around the 120th try, my mind may have flatlined, but I was starting to get a feel for things, and developed a strategy. You see, I started to figure out what types were overpowered in early generations. Cool elemental types like electric and fire? No, 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 my dear viewer, that's bait. I can't explain it, but in Gen 3, they don't feel as strong. But you know what did feel strong? Yes, dragon types, but that's obvious. More subtly, it was normal and poison types that were strong. Things like Mux, Norlax, Tauros, even Wheezing, they hit like a truck, and they're tanky too. After I got one of those Pokemon, I tried to get a very fast special attacker, like Starmie or Arcanine. And in the last slot, I used to flex to constantly swap out a Pokemon. Cause remember, the more you swap, the better your odds are at getting a strong Pokemon at the start of a run. With this strategy, I was consistently hitting 40 wins. But now, I have to learn which legendaries are strong. I kept the same strategy, but like instead of Starmie, we go for Latias. Even with this strategy, I still have to get lucky, cause let's be honest, Muck Latias into a double team Agron still isn't going anywhere. On the 50th day, both my luck and strategy began to align, I hope. I got to battle number 42, and it would only be 6 more battles until I challenged Noland. I was able to get a Regirock from the beginning, and over 3 battles, I managed to acquire a Metagross. And for the last battle, I picked up a Dotrio. Whoa, 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 Magimo, that's 3 physical attackers, are you nuts? At this point? Yes. But let me tell you why I didn't want to give them up. Let's meet the squad that'll fight Noland now. You see this guy? This guy right here? He's not just a rock, he's a smart rock. And more importantly, he knows Explosion. Not now, boy. My very own Exploding Regirock. 
You see this other guy? He looks like a genius AI, but he also knows explosion. And Dotrio, honestly, it's just here because it's fast. So I had two Pokemon that knew the super high damage move that I can use as a last resort. And as long as I had one other Pokemon alive, it's a guaranteed win. Okay, so the first battle, Metagross versus Golem. Easy starting matchup. I just fist him with a Meteor. Then he throws out a Charizard and I send out Regirock. No problemo. Then he sends out a Victory Bell and before I can use Explosion, he one-shots my Regirock. <laughs> Surely I won't get swept by a Victory Bell of all things. Right? I send out Metagross and it ends up being faster than the Victory Bell and gets an explosion off. Woo! So there I was on the 152nd try. After two months of blood, sweat, tears. Actually, never mind, none of that. I I just sat in my chair. <laughs> Take that nerd, GG easy. So that's one symbol down, six more to go. Oh yeah, I took a break to try out the other facilities. That's why you see some silver symbols here, but we'll talk about those in later videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.